All right, boys. First of two times we're going to be live today. Oh, yeah. Yep. So we got the show for you this morning. It's absolutely jam-packed. They were live streaming the Natty tonight. You I thought we were new. watching Pacific Rim well, in real life. Well, that's what it is. I mean, it's <laughs> with Klingon and, and Zach Eady that's going to, I guess, fight each other for interstellar domination. I don't think Godzilla and King Kong came out for another week, but I guess we're going to go <laughs> ahead and see it. But got a bunch of news to get to. Should be a fun day. UConn and Purdue get set to battle for the 2024 National Championship. We're going to live stream it. John Calipari is finalizing a deal to become the next head coach at Arkansas. You heard that right. And Don Staley just led the South Carolina women to a perfect season but says she supports dudes playing in women's sports. So it's like, damn, Don, come on. I'm Jake Crane, and welcome to Crane & Company. Now, last week, I said that Eric Musselman leaving Arkansas was really a lose-lose for both parties, the Hogs and Musselman. But now that it seems like John Calipari, after 15 years, is going to leave Kentucky to take the Arkansas job, well, I think it's just the opposite for both parties. I think it's not only a win-win for Calipari and Kentucky, I think it's a win for Arkansas as well. You cannot deny the connections that Calipari has, his ability to recruit, and his understanding of the lay of the land. But it was time for a fresh start for Kentucky. The last five seasons, we know what's happened the last two. They haven't made it past the Sweet 16. And that's not good enough at one of the ultimate blue bloods of the sport. Now, Arkansas is going to pay him a little bit less than he was making at Kentucky. But if the right guy gets that job in Lexington, the Wildcats are going to be the biggest problem that they have been in a long, long time. We know the monster that is Big Blue Nation. And they need some new blood in there to get it back pumping and get the crowd together and get everybody in line. Now, from an Arkansas standpoint, you got a proven guy, a guy that's going to be able to put a roster together and has one of the best recruiting classes in the country that was coming into Kentucky, but some will want to go play for him as well, including going to get big-time players out of the transfer portal, which seems to never close. But if you are John Calipari, you do better as a guy that's not on top of the mountain, but close. Is Arkansas a blue blood in the college basketball world? No, but they are a huge brand and we know how hot they can get. Maybe all these big time expectations at a place like Kentucky, well, Calipari just wasn't meeting them because he didn't have a little bit of that underdog role. Well, now at Arkansas, he's gonna be 13 flavors of piss and a chip on his shoulder. So, a win all across the board. The only question left is who takes the Kentucky job now? We'll see. Bring in my co-host, Former Michigan quarterback, David Cohn, my brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, Blaine Crane. Guys, last night, I mean, this, you know, broke the internet basically for a while. Shocking, but when you look at it, I don't see this as a knock against Kentucky. I don't see this as a knock against Calipari. I just think it was kind of a Febreze brothers time, and you needed a fresh start. Arkansas got what they wanted. Kentucky now gets to see if they can go get a guy to replace Cal that can maybe get them back to where they feel like they should be in the NCAA tournament. You use the phrase win-win. This could very this may be a win-win situation for everyone involved, but it still is shocking. Yeah, right? it's like, nuts. like I can't believe that John Calipari is leaving Kentucky to be the head basketball coach at Arkansas. That statement could just exist alone. When you throw in the fact that he's going to make less at Arkansas, that's when I really have a lot of questions. I mean, this guy had a lifetime contract at Kentucky. So here's a couple of the details they're trying to finalize today, really, to get this thing in the books. Uh, the contract is expected to have an overall base salary slightly less than the $8.5 million he was making at Kentucky. However, the deal is expected to be incentive-laden uh, with the ability to pass that number. Uh, well, first off, if you ask Kentucky, hey, if you were wanting an incentive-laden deal where you get paid more if you do better, we could have signed you to that several years ago For sure. if you wanted to make less money. Uh, another thing here, the, the key relationship to help the deal come together was Calipari's longstanding ties with John H. Tyson of the Tyson Chicken family, billionaire who is a longtime artist. Arkansas benefactor. So there you go. Now the question is who's next at Kentucky? And you just got to think like, Jay Wright, are you answering the phone or what? Yeah. And, and we want to know in the comments and in the chat, whether you're watching us live, we got our call uh, phone line open at 715 AM Central. We want to hear from you. Who do you think 
should take that job. We're going to throw a couple candidates around. But yeah, Tyson Chicken, talk about a guy that's got a lot of chicken, billionaire with a B. You heard Jerry Jones' name kind of thrown in there as, as well that may have had a little bit of influence. But he's making over less, it. though. That's the well, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just... How it just goes to show you. Look, Cal's got a ton of money, and and Blaine, we've you know watched contracts get higher and higher and higher. Uh, so it, to me, it almost felt like yeah, you know, you had that what thirty three million dollar buyout at Kentucky if they had to fire him. So that's a big you know check that comes off the table at Kentucky and can maybe pay somebody else's buyout. You know, if it were say eight million or maybe eighteen million at a certain place in Tuscaloosa, we're gonna see. But uh, Blaine, I mean, uh, who do you think should take over? For Kentucky? Yeah. Uh, I mean, probably Nate Oates. <laughs> now, are you saying well, that? Well, I'm not saying that because I'm an Auburn fan, but if you're out against Kentucky, why not? Yeah. Jay Wright ain't coming out. Well, you, I think you make Jay, Jay Wright ain't coming out to coach Kentucky. You're Peyton Manning going out on top. I'm going to sit my sweet ass on this set and talk about what other people should do. Yeah. I don't want to go play UConn. I don't right want to go. No, I'm good. Yeah. Look at Dan Hurley and that thing. I'm fine. Someone <laughs> brings some Capri Sun, some orange slices, and I'm good. I'll sit up here with Shaq. Who cares? Yeah. Go get Nate Oates. Why not go get Nate Oates? Well, what, what do you have? What's in the barrel right now? I mean, I wouldn't go get Bruce Pearl right now. Nate Oates, he's the hottest girl, hottest girl right now at, at the ball. There, uh, who, the, the, water, the well's not that deep. He's going to call. Yeah, I, Ghostbusters? I, I think if, if we're looking at, at active coaches, number one, I make Dan Hurley tell me no. Mm-hmm. I know he's at UConn, and I know it's rolling, and he'd probably be nuts to leave. And I know UConn's got money. But Kentucky's got some cheddar to throw around there, too, especially in basketball. That vault's a little bit bigger yeah. in basketball than it is in football. I, I, I make Dan Hurley tell me no. I don't think Jay Wright's coming out. I don't, I, think, I don't so think he either. is. But if Jay Wright was coming out, then, hey, we, let's get this party started. Like, it's a pink song out here. Uh, but, no, I mean, Nate Oates is obvious. The difference in Bruce Pearl. And, you know, Bruce Pearl, I think, 64 you know, and it looks like Stephen Pearl's kind of positioning to get the job after him. Uh, is is that something where Bruce would jump to Kentucky for the last couple of years? I don't think so, but it's Kentucky. Who the hell knows? But I'm with Blaine. I mean, at this point, when you're looking around, I mean, Todd Golden signed an extension at Florida, but he's a guy I'd have on the yeah, list. Nate Oates sure. signed an extension, obviously, at Alabama for a whopping $18 million in the buyout now, which can, can, Kentucky could afford. But then you go back and look at maybe some other guys that are in. Rick Patino mm. put the band back together. He's not exactly, you know, the Pied Piper at St. John's right now when you look at it. There were some struggles there. You know, they didn't make the NCAA tournament. That probably ain't the, happening at Kentucky. I mean, there's one guy. I mean, you can call Billy Donovan. I was going to say. You can call Billy. Well, Billy we're talking Donovan. about guys that are in the NBA. Call Billy. Billy. The next one I was going to say. I mean, what's it been? Five years now with the Bulls? And he's right? still Ten young years, enough. Nine years out. He's 58, I believe. Yeah. And look, Dan Hurley has a chance to do something tonight that hasn't been done since Billy Donovan did it at Florida. Back-to-back national championships. Would Billy Donovan return to the college game? We're not talking about some job. It's Kentucky. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're for talking sure. about a top three, top five job in the sport. Everybody's going to be at least answering the phone. Yeah, I, I, I cannot wait to see how this plays out. Again, it's there's, and, and I said this at Chris Beard's at Ole Miss. I get that. Would Kentucky take a chance on Chris Beard? Like I said, when you heard that, uh, you know, hey guys, you know, it looks like Chris Beard is going to be the guy at Arkansas. It's never the first name you hear. Very rarely is it the first name you hear. Obviously, it didn't end up being Chris Beard. Chris Beard actually, you know, decided to return to Ole Miss, which I think it's amazing when an employee rewards an employer for giving them a chance when everybody else counted them out, right? Ole Miss went and took that chance on Chris Beard after, you know, the allegations and stuff that happened at Texas, uh, and he rewarded them for that, you know? And not that they had the greatest year of all time, but I think you can see Ole Miss going in the right direction. Now, different circumstance, but Auburn did something similar with Bruce Pearl. You know, Bruce Pearl had that barbecue issue at Tennessee, the show calls, whatever. Auburn went out and took a chance. Bruce Pearls could have gone other places, but he decided to reward Auburn. So was Chris Beard offered the Arkansas job? I believe he was offered the Arkansas job. So he was the first choice? I think he was the first choice, and they... He was going to have to tell them no, and I think he he did tell them. Gotcha. No. Now, was I in the room and heard it, but people I trust, just like the same guy that called me yesterday about 4.30 and said, you're not going to believe this, but I just talked to a, you know, quote-unquote group of five head coach. I know it's kind of different in college basketball, and he said Calipari's going to Arkansas, and I still don't believe him. Yeah. A couple hours later, it breaks. Uh, shout out to my buddy, uh, you know, Bart. You know who you are. 
But it's going to be interesting to follow. That's for sure. Yeah. Speaking about interesting to follow, do you owe back taxes or still have unfiled returns? Shh. Don't worry. We got you covered. It can really weigh on your mind, especially when the IRS has become more determined than ever. They're squatting up against us, y'all. Their chief data and analytics officer revealed that the IRS is focused on an enforcement project with an average return on investment of about $6 for every $1 spent. How the hell else do you think they're going to pay for all this in Ukraine? They're targeting individuals and businesses that currently owe back taxes or haven't filed their tax returns. But guess what? We've got a hero. Tax Network USA. The hero. The hero save us. The, hero the nation's the leading hero. tax relief firm. They know the tax code and they will fight for you. They've got a record, all right. And it's basically undefeated. They negotiated over a billion dollars in tax relief for their clients. Billion. Their team's knowledgeable with any type of tax issue, whether you owe 10000 or $10 million, they can help. So don't face the IRS without a professional. It is not the smart move. Contact Tax Network USA for the best strategic advice to help you reduce or even eliminate your debt. Call today, 1-800-245-6000 or visit their website at tnusa.com slash booster. They'll give you a pre free private consultation on how you can settle your tax debt today. That's tnusa.com slash booster. All right, we're going to get to the Booster Club. But first, we're live streaming the game tonight, 8 p.m. All right, hop on here with us. That's 8 p.m. Central. Game starts at about 8.20, I believe, if and, you know, around there. We know how it rock, uh, rocks and uh, rock and rolls. Uh, we appreciate you guys. It's going to be a ton of fun right here on the channel. So turn on the game, mute the TV, listen to us. We're going to be betting. There's going to be friendship. Surprise appearances, pyrotechnics, you know, there may be even a dragon that shows up at this point. So check it out on the live stream. But, it's, Booster it's, Club, it's, what's going on? It's, it's, All right, Booster Club, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you donate and it's on topic, I will read it. Unless you're Charles Dossett, then I'll read it the next day in your face. Charles, let's start off with Scotty. Scotty doesn't know, Scotty. but maybe he does. When was the last time Calipari led his team to a championship? He may be a great recruiter and no basketball, but his teams always lose when he when it counts. Yeah, if we're talking about regular season or if we're talking about national championship, obviously their, their last national championship was with Anthony Davis and that team in 2014, 2015, I think. They went that year, right? They won it in 2012, I think. 2012, yeah, because... Uh, it was the perfect season that got ruined, right? Yeah, in, but that got ruined. That got ruined in the Final Four. Yeah. Um, so SEC regular championship. I need to look at it. Here's he, here's something you you got to have food for thought. And it is a fresh start. It is a new place. But Arkansas, and I don't want to use the term "fired" with Eric Musselman because that's not what happened. There's multiple rumors and narratives about why he left this, that, and the other. But you're losing a guy that I know this past year wasn't pretty for Arkansas, but. The three years before that, he had been to two Elite Eights and a Sweet 16. Now, Coach Cal at Kentucky, with more lottery picks than just about anybody, right? They, they haven't been able to make it to the Sweet 16 or past the Sweet 16 in the past five years. So he needs a resurgence in the NCAA tournament. Because again, at a place like Kentucky, the standard is what you do in the NCAA tournament. The regular season's fun and dandy. It's cool to talk about. Obviously, recruiting's always on fire, and it'll be like that at Kentucky. But you are judged on how you do at the NCAA tournament. Obviously, I hadn't been working out. Maybe you can go to Arkansas, kind of be that next tier of Blue Bloods where, yeah, there's a ton of pressure. Obviously, they're paying you a lot of money, but it is different than Kentucky. I, I think we can all agree with that. All right, so 2011-2012, Kentucky won the national championship and they went 38 and 2 that year. Oh. All right. And then the 2014 2015 season, that's when they were 38 and 1, lost in the final four. Was that to Wisconsin? I believe that was I believe, Wisconsin. Was that to Decker and them? I think so. Yeah. So that was 2014 2015. Next year, 2015 2016. Um, no, I'm sorry. That was 2013 2014. The next year, 2014 2015, they lost, uh, they lost in the semifinal. So he went to two champion. He went to one championship after they won it. One Final Four after they won it. Went thirty-eight and one that year. And then since then, second round exit, regional final exit, regional semifinal. That made the second final, week in years. Back to back, no tournament. Then first round exit, second round exit, first. Round. Jake, you always say he's the guy who does what? Does the less least with, with the more. most? Or does yeah, less with more than Charmin Ultra. And look, if you're at Arkansas, I know Arkansas is not Kentucky, but they expect you. One thing, Muscle, oh yeah, no. Musselman did. Yeah. When it came around, the bus started going in March. It might not have been 
last. No, they're not. They're years. not giving you all those pounds of Tyson chicken for you to come in there and make it in the second round. I can promise you that. All right, let's go to KK. What's up? He says, "Don't forget, Arkansas also committed six million a year now in NIL for basketball." Look, Arkansas, Arkansas's got a deep bag monetarily. Most of these places do. They've got a lot more money than you think about, and depending on what they care about the most, that's where they're going to give away the biggest chunk of change. Can you imagine though? Let's say something happens with Sam Pittman this year, which is very, it's on the table. You know, it's, it's time to, you know what, or get off the pot if you're Sam Pittman in the football team. Then all of a sudden you look at replacing Musselman with Calipari, and maybe depending on the offense, I know there's been bad blood in the past, but could Petrino end up being the head man again at Arkansas? You'd have Petrino and Cal. That'd be a funny dynamic. I was going to Cedar Creek curmudgeon. Says Cal focused too much on turning players into NBA millionaires and forgot about winning championships. If I'm Kentucky, it's Nados or Buzz for Mitch Barnhart. I don't. I don't think that's crazy at all. Again, Nados is going to be at the top of your list. He should, and that's a compliment to Alabama. You know, you're going to have some Alabama fans that'll be like, Nados will never take the Kentucky job. He would never do that with what they're paying him now. If he did, could you blame him? Mm. Like he wasn't. He's not from Alabama. He didn't grow up in Alabama. This isn't his alma mater. He was coaching high school in Michigan. Like, coaching in Alabama is fantastic in basketball. Coaching in Kentucky is like coaching in Alabama in football at Alabama. So I, you couldn't blame him at all. It's, it's just, again, when you look at, at the money and the prestige and their tradition, you're always going to travel well. You're always going to be in the spotlight. When you talk about trying to just turn guys into NBA players, I think it's a good blend. You need a mix, right? You want a mix of NBA lottery picks and experience. I think the biggest problem that Kentucky fans had with Cal was it felt like they, and, and basketball, that's how the rules are, they would just have to reload with all this young talent every year, and that young talent goes and makes one mistake in an NCAA tournament game against some white witch that can hit 12 threes in a game, and they lose instead of seeing these older players that we see. You know, look, look at the teams that are in it right now that have continued to, to be in it. Their old experience is the unteachable and tangible, and it'll always be that way. Well, the guy whose job he's taken, Eric Musselman, was was able to do both the last couple yep. of years. I mean, he had a lottery picks. He has several mm -hmm. NBA players he developed, but they also made deeper runs than Kyle did at Kentucky. Exactly right. All right, let's go to KIH. He says, Nate Oates had a one seed and a two seed lose in the Sweet 16. For your, for your information, Alabama did not play UCLA in the lead date. It was a Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm hiring Nate Oates right now if I'm Kentucky. Well, and... and oh. <laughs> If your argument was was Nate Oates had done that at Kentucky versus what Calipari had done at Kentucky, I, I could understand that. And this is no disrespect to Auburn or, or Alabama or, or most other schools in the SEC. That ain't Kentucky basketball. Like with Kentucky basketball, you are operating at the highest level of talent, of of resources, of development. You have everything possible. The lights aren't not coming on in Coleman Coliseum at Kentucky. All right, the, the, the lights are staying on and rub. You're not having to deal with being a football school. So when we're comparing what somebody has done at Kentucky to Alabama, while there are similarities, those are not, there's, there's not an equal opportunity employer from that standpoint. So what Nate Oates has done at Alabama, I think is incredible. Go back and look at the last four years. I mean, it's, it's borderline insane what he's done at Alabama, including this year going to the Final Four in the first time what feels like forever. All right, let's go to J-Dubs. He says, can we see Shaka Smart go to Kentucky? I, I kind of put, and I think this is the best comparison. I kind of put Shaka Smart in the Lane Kiffin category. Shaka's had the huge job. He's been the, the young, up-and-coming, promising next one, right? He was at Texas. You know, just like Lane was the Raiders coach as a young guy. He was Tennessee's head coach. He was USC's head coach. He's been to the biggest of the biggest brands, but he's found a really good fit. Marquette, to me, is an incredible fit for Shaka Smart. You're in the Big East, a basketball conference, right? At a place like Marquette, a basketball school. Look at the talent you've been able to get there. And yes, you're expected to do well, but that expectation doesn't clash with a place like it did at Texas, which is a football school, which is a football school. So if... if you're Shaka Smart. Do you want to go back to that well? I don't think Lane Kiffin wants to go back to that well. I think Shaka's kind of found that same niche. I'm at a big place. It's an important place, but it's not, you know, one of the the biggest, brightest Broadway stage, you know, lighted places that there is. And there's there's merit to that. Comfortability leads to stability, and for some guys, that's the best recipe. 
And if you're Shaka, now who knows? Who the hell knows? I mean, if they call, you, you're going. If they, well, if they call, would you talk to them? Yeah, because it makes you look better at the place you're at. What's the easiest way to go get a raise at Marquette? Hey, uh, hey, AD at Marquette? Yeah, Kentucky just called me about being their basketball coach. Maybe I should get some more of those lawyers or people together and put some money together and put it in my bank account. Why am I not driving a Tesla truck? You know what I'm saying? Cyber why truck. I, yeah, why do I not? My cyber truck, whatever it is, the one that can you know, travel through time. Let's go to a five dollar donation from Texas Ed. Appreciate it, Texas Ed. Does Kentucky call Chris Beard after turning down Arkansas? Kalen DeBoer wasn't going to leave Washington <laughs> until Alabama called. That'd be a twist, wouldn't it? Chris Beard doesn't take the Arkansas job. <laughs> well, for that to happen, I think you would really have to believe that Chris Beard's that much better of a coach than everybody else that's out yeah. there. With what's gone on in the past, not saying, look, I'm not, not a lawyer. I wasn't wasn't part of the case. You know, a lot of alleged whatever. It would have to be such a disparity in how good of a coach Chris Beard is Ooh. compared to the other guys that you possibly could get. And maybe, and I don't think they'd go this route. Could you get Chris Beard for cheaper? Like, is that is I I don't think Kentucky would go that, especially since they just saved thirty three million dollars on a buyout. I don't think his name's on the list. I I, I would be all surprised. the names we've talked about today. I think are on the list somewhere. Yeah, I I would be I would be surprised if if Chris Beard. And I feel like he would have you'd have to get told no multiple times yeah. for, for that. And not that he's a hell of a basketball coach, yeah. make no mistake, but circumstantially, uh, you gotta look at it. But look, speaking of circumstantially, you know, you gotta shave your face circumstantially and other stuff too. All right. And it's been two years, all right, of of fighting and building the future with great products. And Jeremy's razors and everything here, it's only getting better. The second generation. Second. They're here. The technology's been upgraded. The science, the professors, the scientists have come together to formulate a second generation razor with the same mission, all right? You'll notice a redesigned ergonomic handle for superior durability and improved coated stainless steel blades, second gen. For those of you who craft your masculine look with precision, we have Jeremy's new and improved Precision 5 Razor. Precision Razor. The trimmer, the precision trimmer allows you to tailor your shave all right, it also provides you an exceptionally smooth and close shave. And now, if shaving is more of a chore than you want, just get it done over and over with the brand new Sprint 3. It's for you. So open blade geometry allows for a quick, clean shave so you can get back to your manly activities as quickly as possible. Razor's made right with progress. It isn't progressive. Head on over to jeremysrazors.com mm-hmm. to upgrade to your new second-gen razor today because why not look smooth? And be smooth. It might James be some Razor. cool pictures of a guy on a website. You know? Might be some cool, yeah? cool yeah. new pics. I'll be, uh, there'll be pictures of me on the website. You'll cool be new pics. See. Precision cool. five. Everybody's excited new about. Um, speaking about precision, David, let's get to, uh, let's get to some best and worst. It's your best um, and worst. then we're, we're going to just keep rocking and rolling. It's just a great situation here. All right. Best and worst you before we do championship preview. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? All right. David, you can call the, you're the quarterback here. You want to call the audible huddle play? Huddle, 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 we said this multiple times. You go back, UConn's second half. Dan Hurley has to be one of the best coaches in the game with the halftime adjustments. Yeah. The way they extended Alabama uh, away from their extended their defense, made Al- ISOed Alabama way off their three point line. It just made her tough when we get open looks. And I even thought, even Mark Sears played well, but it, he had 20 plus points, but it was the most quiet 20 points oh, I've damn. seen from I was Mark thinking Sears. the exact same thing. It was the most quiet That's 20 wild. points. I've ever seen from Mark Sears. Everything UConn makes the easy stuff look so hard. And we've talked about this with Alabama, and I was questioning this, and they had a little bit of a run in the first half when they ran five out. When you you have to run, if you don't have a true big, which Alabama does not, well, with that clinging what the thing they got do, down low at UConn, and the type of team that you are in Alabama, you are a running and shooting threes basketball team. You have to live or die by that. If you think you're just going to hold UConn the entire game, it's not going to happen. And they did it for about six minutes. Six minutes, seven minutes in the first half, and, and they were hitting threes, they were running, and that's a transition game. Then they took him out and put Pringle in, and you're just not going to win 
that basketball game that way. Well, it's it's just it's depth a lot of it. Here's what I find fascinating about UConn. The second half adjustments, yes. I mean, hell, look what they did to Illinois. They went on a 30-0 run mm -hmm. to open the second half. It just seems to me, like with UConn, either one of two things is gonna happen. Either you're a one-trick pony and they're gonna take that trick away, or you've got a dog or two, they'll let that one eat, but nobody else eats. Why did Bama beat North Carolina? Mark Sears balled out, but Grant Nelson balled out. It seems to me, when, and when you look at Clemson, right, it, it was, it was uh, Jarrett Stevenson, right, who supplemented the other guys. UConn said, all right, Mark Sears, you're going to go for 20. Estrada, you may hit a couple shots. Nobody else is going to piss a drop, really. And they didn't. And, and, but every time that UConn needs something good to happen, they make it happen. Every time that it felt like Alabama would get close, where in other times they were able to make that run and take that lead, UConn just separates themselves long enough to give you a little bit of hope but make you doubt yourself. And it just seems that UConn is just good at everything. Like They're just good at everything. There's not a weakness. There's not a weakness. Even if they go through some somewhat of a scoring rut, which rarely happens, their defense turns up, right? Vice versa. They're a fantastic team. I love their guard play. Spencer and Tristan. And Kat, they, Bama's plan was we're going to back off a couple of these guys yeah, and the see same if they thing can make North threes Carolina. and get in the gap. And what happened? Bang, every time. Mm -hmm. Every time they back off, UConn would hit it's, that three early. It's crazy. Like, And if you go back and watch this game, maybe it's just me. <laughs> I know UConn won by 14, but I didn't think UConn played great. I didn't think UConn mm. played great. I really, I don't think UConn's played their best basketball game yet. Well, that's horrifying. Though. I know. I really don't think they have. I mean, they, they didn't shoot well in the first half, back-to-back -back games where they didn't shoot well in the first half. But the thing about it is they always have a guy show up, right? Castle dropped 20 plus points. Uh, that Nate Oates, the game plan was to play off of him early, comes out, bangs a couple threes early. Yep. UConn did what they had to do early to, to take Bama's what? They took Bama's best shot. And there's something about standing in the ring when a guy hits you with his best shot and you turn around and just look at him. Yeah. You want to talk about terrifying. Well, it wasn't like Klingon was just kicking their ass the whole game either. Yeah. Like it was Trouble with the double early. I mean, Castle was the X Factor, but not even on the offensive end so much as on the defensive end. I mean, he's six foot six, and you could tell the size advantage against Sears. That's why I agree with you. Like Sears ended up with 24 points, was a leading scorer for Alabama. But even when he was at 17 or 18 points, I'm like, how does Sears already have 18 points? Yeah. It felt Quiet. like he hadn't scored because of what Castle was doing on the defensive end. Uh, all right, so tonight, here's the odds right now. Now, UConn is minus seven against Purdue, and the over-under is 145 and a half. I still like the over, to be honest. I, I, I do, too. You know, starting on Purdue's side, there's no secret to what's going to have to happen for you to win this game. The problem I think Purdue's going to run into, and, and I'll say this real quickly about Zach Eady against NC State. We sat here on the preview show, and I picked NC State to win because I didn't think Zach Eady was going to be able to make the what I call the mid-range tangerine tosses, because that's what it looks like when he has a basketball in his hands, where he, you know, he's typically able to back guys down, and it's either a turnaround dunk or he's just laying the ball through the hoop. He hit more five to seven, seven to ten foot turnarounds in this game. I don't think he missed one against DJ Burns. He got a couple rolls, and I thought DJ was all right, but you know, NC State, they would flash that double a little bit. He wasn't able to work DJ Burns out of the post, but he was hitting those shots. Can he do that same thing, or can he actually back down Klingon, who's not as wide or as heavy as DJ Burns is, but he is seven foot two, and he'd be able to make those shots and or get fouled? It's either gonna because I don't think UConn's gonna double him unless he starts hurting him. If I'm Dan Hurley, I'm not gonna double you until you. I've, I've got a tree too until you prove to me that you can hurt me over and over and over again. And then you have Samson coming off the bench as well. If Purdue's gonna win this game, Zach Eady's gonna have to do his thing, but you're also gonna have to make kickout threes. You're just going to have to, whether it's Gillis, whether it's Lawyer, lawyer, whether it's Braden Smith. I'm just having a hard time figuring out how Purdue, and Purdue fans will probably be happy I've picked against them the whole, the whole tournament. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how Braden Smith gets around Castle. Like, I'm trying to figure out how these guys are going to be able to get in the gap. Yeah, I don't think Because I think Klingon's going to front Edie. Because if I'm seven foot two, and I, was, I know Zach Edie's seven foot four, I've got a better chance of being able to front Zach Eady and intercept that pass that's yeah, typically been going in right. than anybody else they've really played. 
So I know you got to mix it up and do a little bit of both, but if Edie is backing down Klingon to the cylinder every time, why would you not front him? And then when you front him, can you take away the interior pass? And if that happens, then produce, I don't know what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I, I, the more I look at this game, the more I like UConn. The game's sitting at six and a half and seven. And I do think the battle down low is going to be a huge part of the game. But I do think it's going to come down to somewhat of guard play. And I don't believe the guards that much in Purdue as much as I do as UConn. The system and what they run in, the physicality of UConn. To go back to that NC State game and Purdue, I thought Purdue was going to run away with this game. Look, it's a great story. DJ Burns, great story. You have to remember who Zach, Zach Eady is and what he looks like. He is 7-4, so the mid-range game to us, for him, is a layup, all right? He's been doing this all year. He doesn't have to be under the basket to score. He can hit the – if you're 7-4 and can hit a post hook, it's unstoppable. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to block unless you're 7 foot plus. Is he shooting down at the rim, do you think? When he, when he, has the, when he turns and he throws it in, you're 7 foot 4. I wonder what his wingspan well, is. Well, think about it this way. To cut down the nets, the other day he didn't get on the ladder. That's you see that? Insane. He did not He's get on the ladder stop, to cut David, down stop. the net. Seven four three hundred. You for real? I'm serious. Pounds. See if you can pull that standing, video back there. He was standing. Zach Eady there. bypassed the ladder to go around and cut off the and cut the net down. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll answer your question with that fun fact. <laughs> so I, I like I, the more I look at it, you know, Zach Eady, phenomenal year, probably the the best player in college basketball this year. You make that argument. But I do think the difference is in this game is I believe in UConn's guards a lot more than I believe in yeah. Purdue's. Well, Zach Eady can go off and get his, and Purdue can still lose by 15. Like that's just what you that's what UConn does. So what what's your what's your best bet for tonight for the live stream, David? Uh, I really like Connecticut's TTP over 75 and a half like is that. one that I'm taking. UConn total team points over 75 and a half, and that's minus 125 right now. Again, I got the bet online spreads up right now. Connecticut minus seven over under minus one or over under 145 and a half is minus 115. So there's going to be a bunch of good stuff tonight. I, I like the over. It's at 145 and a half, yep. right? Um, I, I I just look at I, it feels like an 8170 game to me. Mm. That's what it feels like. I think Connecticut covers. I think the over hits. And if Connecticut wins by double digits again, would this be two straight years where they won every game in the NCAA tournament by double digits? Yep. I mean, I don't. I, that's the that's one of the most dominant things. It, even Florida, I need to go back and look at Florida's scores when they went back to back. There's no way they beat everybody by double digits. There's no way. I don't. I don't think that it's just. In, it's just because Gordon Hayward, unless I'm losing my mind or maybe my years are off, almost hit a half court shot. I think to beat him, but that may have been a different year. That may have been Villanova. Uh, all right, uh, Blaine, give me your best. What's your best bet? Oh God, give me UConn to cover the spread. Yeah, I mean, why would I not at this point? Why would I not? I mean, yeah, and why would you not if you're starting a business? Tell them. Right? If you're running an online storefront, why would you not use Shopify? That's the question everybody's asking. It's not whether UConn's going to cover or Purdue's going to cover. It's and I get asked this all the time, Jake. Starting a podcast, I want to sell merch, I want to do this, I want to do that. Well, Shopify, which they're a global commerce platform, they help you sell at every stage of your business. From the, hey, I just launched my online shop to the, oh my goodness, we just hit a million orders. Why do I feel like an old boy from Tyson Chicken? Uh, Shopify is there to help you grow. And when you hear this sound, hit it, David. We rich, y'all. Our marketing team uses Shopify every day to sell our merch. And we love how easy it is to add more items, ship products, and track conversions. Make sure you get some of that Crane & Company merch while we're thinking about it. And they help you turn browsers into buyers. And how, how do I know that? Well, they got the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better than other leading commerce platforms. So now, how, no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. And you, that's right, you out there, whether you're listening or watching, you can sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash C-R-A-I-N. That's all lowercase. That's S-H-O-P-I-F-Y dot com slash C-R-A-I-N. Go there now to help grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify dot com slash Crane. Because when you Shopify, you shop it right. All right, here are the 12 final scores for Florida's 2006-2007 NCAA tournament when they went back-to-back. 
2006, 76 to 50, went over South Alabama. Sorry about the alma mater there. 82 to 60 over Milwaukee. Sweet 16, they played Georgetown, beat them 57 53. Okay. So that was a close game. Uh, they beat number one Villanova in the Elite Eight, 75 62. George Mason, 73 58. Mm. And then they won the national championship game against UCLA, 73 to 57. So okay. So that was so every Georgetown. game but one. Georgetown. Yep. So the next year, 2007, 112 to 69 over Jackson State, 74 67 over Purdue, 60. 55-57 over Butler, 85-77 over Oregon, 76-66 over UCLA. Then they beat the Buckeyes 84-75. So they they beat teams worse in the 06 season. Yeah, so you had you only won two in the I say that you only won two games in the NCAA tournament by double digits. So this is the most dominant run with that we've seen from an NCAA tournament standpoint. And those Florida teams impressive. were loaded. Yeah. Loaded. That's what makes UConn so impressive. Yeah, they got NBA players. Who knows who's going to end up where and how well they're going to do. But it's not like you're sitting there with, you know, three lottery picks or, or Joachim Noah and Al Horford and all, and all these guys. I mean, it's just incredible. Mike Miller, right, I, I think was, was on those teams as well. All right, I want to get to best and worst, Dave, and then we're going to get to uh, phone calls here. All right, let's do it. I feel like we got to start with Don Staley. So, yes. Like, oh, he's the yeah. Best, the best and the worst, honestly. Oh, um, <laughs> So you want to start with worst, Flynn? Yeah, I'll start with Go worst. Um, this is Don Staley, the head coach of South Carolina women's basketball team. Um, I'm not going to say much. Go ahead and roll the clip. One of the major issues facing women's sports right now is the debate discussion topic about the inclusion of transgender athletes, biological males in women's sports. I was wondering if you would tell me your position on that issue. Um, yeah. Take a sip of that water. Damn, you got deep on me, didn't you? Shouldn't be that deep. I, I, I'm on the. I mean, I'm on the the opinion mm. of of if mm. you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman, or and you want to play sports, or or vice versa. You should be able to play. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Somebody who looks at women every day in the eyes, all right, and tries to get them over that mountain, the long journey, the process, all right, to sit up there on stage and say, yeah, sure, let's just come let men play in the women's game. This is the problem. Women at the top aren't standing up for women. And to the people, and we've talked about this a lot, who don't think after Don Staley, the head, the national championship head coach for South Carolina, won't let women come play in the WNBA, our college, our guys come play in the WNBA, our college basketball, you're crazy. Because the head coach of South Carolina just said she's fine with it. Uh, here's here's what I think. Uh, obviously, you can see her reaction. I don't think she's. I think she took a. And I don't agree with this. I think she took an off ramp. That's what it seems like to me. Because she can always, here's what I think will happen. She'll face some backlash for this, but she knew there'd be backlash if she said, well, women should play in women's sports, men should play in men's sports. But here's what she'll say. She'll say, no, 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 I didn't say that men should play in women's college basketball. I said you should have the opportunity to play sports. I didn't say that you should be able to play Division I college basketball as a male against females. I just said you should have the option to play Won't sports, stick. Which won't it stick won't stick. It won't stick. She took the won't easy stick. way out. She took the easy way out. <clears throat> and we've talked about this with Sue Bird, with Megan Rapino, with a lot of these high-profile women that are so scared that their backbone disappears. Disappears. So I, I think she will try and... Number one, thanks for asking this question. Yeah. I thought it was a hell of a question. Mm -hmm. But number two, I think there'll be some sort of a walk back where she said, wait a minute, no, no, no. I'm saying maybe we should make like a, a division where, you know, if you think you're a if you're a man that thinks you're a woman, or if you're uh -huh. a penguin that thinks you're a bat, or if you're a, a moose that thinks you're an, a kite, like the, yeah, the, good luck backtracking that. that. No, that was what, Dan Zashevsky yeah. uh, at Outkick who asked that question. And I saw some people get mad that the question was asked. Like, why are we asking this question before the final four? First of all, why should the question need to be asked? That's what we need to ask ourselves yeah. as a society. And then in terms of taking the easy way out, I mean, call me crazy or old, I guess, at this point, but the easy way out to me when asked should 
people who are born a man compete against women? The easy answer is just no. Like that's the easy. Yeah. Out. Well, so, it's not tough. It, you know, it's not. It's in. <laughs> In our realm, yes, but like when you've backed the stuff that Don Staley, that was such an interesting question because it, it puts you in a, like, it puts you on the, the hill, right? You either got to say one thing or the other. Would she have been smarter to say what Iowa, Iowa's coach said? Like, would she have been smarter to say, listen, I'm not. Um, it's an important issue. I'll talk about that in time. Sure. I don't want to do that. And no one would have game. faulted her. And no, no. that's exactly what I was like. We said. all would have celebrated if she came out and said, no, of course not. Like, men need to compete against men, women need to yeah. compete. We would have celebrated that. Yeah. But if she just said, I'm focused on the game right now and just took the Bill that's Belichick fine. approach, yeah, fine. That's fine. Okay. You are getting ready for the game, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, she just let a team to be 38 0. That's what we no. should be talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And instead, the team you just ran out there, one of the greatest women's teams we've ever seen, would have gotten dominated by the lady ballers who just appeared in the movie. That we Without a doubt. Well, it's slowly turning into a documentary. Right. And if you're Don, Don say, what are you afraid of losing? What, you don't think you'll lose your job? Have you just won the national championship in women's basketball? Yeah. No, it's, it, I, what, a, what an interesting conundrum there. My worst, Texas defensive tackle, Tavondre Sweat, mm. getting ready to go in the NFL draft. Biggest opportunity of your life. You make a lot of money in college. You can make a ton more in the NFL. It's a guy with a ton of ability. Charged uh, uh, early yesterday morning with a DWI per KXAN mm. news. Uh, projected second round pick. How dumb can you possibly be? How dumb can you possibly be? And I'm not talking about drinking while you're of age and you know you're you're an adult. You can make your own mind up. Is it smart to do that while you're a guy that's got some weight issues and you're trying to, to get drafted as high as possible? No, this is just dumb. It's dumb to do in general. It's dumb to do for Joe Schmo down the street. It's dumb to do uh, for, for Sweat. But do you, not, you, you just can't call an Uber? You know how much money you get paid to get drafted in the second round of the NFL? Mm -hmm. I think you can maybe pay for that overdraft charge of that Uber that you took home. I, I just, every time I see this, it, it just continues to a, amaze me the level and mixture of arrogance and stupidity. Not that I've never made a mistake. We've all made mistakes, right? Nobody's perfect. But you are in the prime window of your career life right now to be able to take that next step and become a professional. And now the talk around the facilities are, hey, you know, we were gonna take, we we're gonna take sweat. But like, can we trust them? If you can't, if you don't have enough, you know, wherewithal and self-control to be able to handle it right now, what are you going to do when we give you all this money? Like, what are you, we've watched this movie before many, many a time. So just dumb. Just absolutely dumb. Is that dumb. in Texas? Uh, I believe it was in Texas, okay. yeah. Gotcha. Interesting. All right. Uh, my worst of the weekend. I, we got to bring up Kamala Harris's uh, March Madness, what she was talking about. This is clip nine, I believe. Can you just play this? Oh, yeah, this is bad. Do you know, okay, a bit of a history lesson. Do you know that women were not, the women's teams were not allowed to have brackets until 2022? <laughs> Think about what? that and what, that talk about progress, you talk know, about progress. better late than never, but progress. And what that has done, because of course, when, you know, I had a bracket, I'm, it's not broken completely, but I won't <laughs> talk about my bracket. But you know what, just the, how we love, we love March Madness and even just now allowing the women to have brackets and what that does to encourage people to talk more about the women's teams, to watch them. All the things I need in life, a history lesson from Kamala Harris is not one of them. But talk about progress though. 2022. That's our vice president, y'all. You know what's worse? What's no. going on? Go look at the president. You. Look, it's just, this just goes to show you how, and look, I think a lot of, regardless of what side you're on, I think most of these politicians are fake. That's just, uh, that's about as bad Am as Am I I'm missing saying. something? No, because that's about, I mean, David, like, listen, we joke around, people like, oh, you're in the Daily Wire, obviously, you know, you lean politically this way. I don't care where you lean politically. How is... Dumb is dumb. That, like, dumb is dumb. I don't I'm care if you're a girl. Like, I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're black. someone I don't care tell There's, her to say that? So they had to. 2022? Like what? Just before then, like girls didn't play basketball. <laughs> Had to. When, when, here's the question: When did the bracket? When did we start? Getting, like, I'm dying. We need to find out when that was, because either one of two, one of two things happened. One, whoever told her that is just wrong, right? And she'll probably believe. But she's like Ron Bergen. You just probably read whatever you put in the prompter. Or somebody said, "Hey, they didn't get brackets till 2002," and she uh, screwed up. 
Okay, the brackets have been used for women's games since the early 1980s. Oh. So before all of us were born. Yeah. Great. Great. Great history lesson. Thank you, Vice And you see the reporter there, the reporter that he just... Oh, he just... It, this it just runs on Kenny Powers. He's like, it's you just catastrophe. shovel it, and you just give it to me. They'll just eat Talk it. Talk about progress. They'll just eat. Talk about progress. Right? Good God, that's bad. All right, best? Best. All right, guys. Look, my best didn't happen over the weekend. Since we are doing the live stream tonight, and I don't know if we're doing the show tomorrow, I'm going to talk about it today. All right, little my consp- conspiracy theorists out there, a little bit of both. We're going to talk about the solar eclipse that's happening today and some of the things that's happening in it. I don't like it. First, NASA to, be sound, uh, to launch sounding rockets into the moon's shadow during the solar, solar eclipse. Why? Why are we launching? Why are we, why are we attacking Let's the moon? Stay away. Yeah, they're launching rockets. At the moon. They're launching rockets at the moon, all right? And then CERN, C-E-R-N, to test the world's most powerful particle accelerator during April solar eclipse to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. God? Yeah. Three, all right? They built a huge altar. Huge altar in Jerusalem to sacrifice a red calf or goat. Heifer? Heifer for the solar eclipse. Yeah, well, this is the end. I'm just glad Bama lost in the final. NASA sending rockets into the moon. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm, uh, this, why is this solar eclipse being treated different than every other one? That's what worries me. What time is it happening? Like, did, what, what? 3.30. I need what to there? know so I can make sure just to be inside. Like, 3.30 is one of that. Yeah, no, like, I've got no... I don't like any of that that's going on. You know what I want? I want the sun during the day and the moon at night. I get we have to like smash atoms and molecules together at CERN to figure stuff out. But do we really need to do it though? Like, like y'all better figure something out. Why am I still in a plane? Why am I having to take oh, planes God, places? Y'all are shooting rockets at the moon, smashing molecules together. Yet I've got to hop my ass on a Boeing 737 that the engine may fall off in the midair. While Stevie wonders the pilot. That's funny. We were, quickly, um, we were on a plane. I can't remember which plane it was. But we're going to L.A., I believe, and the pilot says, hey, guys, uh, we're having some electrical problems. We're going to uh, start. Yeah, the we're TVs gonna, wouldn't work. We're going to start the plane over. He was like, yeah, mid-air. We're going <laughs> to reboot to that. I was like, no, dog, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. With the- he says he's going to start it over mid-air. Yeah, I was like, no, I'm fine. No, don't turn anything off. Don't start anything over. No, please, no. Uh, all right, my best. All right, they'll give you a little SEC love here. The Carolina Panthers and the most underrated defensive player in the NFL, Derek Brown, have agreed to a four-year contract extension uh, that's going to include, uh, it's a $96 million deal that includes $63.165 million guaranteed. Woo. The Panthers suck, but Derek Brown does not. He's really good. This dude, if, again, it, I'm just telling you if, if you, if you haven't kept up with him, you don't watch him, you want to talk about two gapping? It's basically an Aflac insurance commercial. The amount of gap that happens with Derek Brown. <laughs> Get that bag, young buddy. Good. Get that. I and guess- a guy that didn't opt out of his bowl game when he was going to be a top five for pick. Him. Played in it. Good for him. Yeah. My best of the weekend. How about we go with the Atlanta Braves? First home series of the year against the Diamondbacks, who were in the World Series last year. They're that. down 5 2. Give on Friday, won 6-5. They were down 6 nothing on Saturday, Give me that. 9-8. Yesterday, they win 5-2 for Give the me that. sweep. And guess who's coming town tonight, Jake? Guess who's coming to town? The Who? New Tell York them. Mets. That, the New York Mets. You spanked that. that. You spanked that tail, Les. Spank that ass, Les. Oh, Spencer, how's that elbow? Oh, yeah, God. look. That's, no. so well, it always, it, we can't keep pitchers healthy. Okay. No. Owie! Listen, at least it happened at the beginning of the year. With, that is true. Uh, who knows with UCLs? It just it, it always gets one of the Braves pitchers. I just look at... You know, it's like poor Mike Soroka. Like, and now, like, Spencer, I don't don't need that to happen to you, but it's a uh, good start. Major League Baseball, good start. Um, long way to go. Long way to go. But, all right, the phone lines are open. We want to get to you guys. Uh, let's get to the Booster Club quickly, then maybe a couple reactions. Then I want to get to the phones. I know it's got a $5 donation from Jack Hogan. Jack, appreciate it, brother. He says, Rhodes versus Reigns last night was enough to make a grown man cry. Also, Braves and Yankees look poised to make a long run if almost everybody stays healthy. Spencer Strider, I don't know. Yankees are going to fold. Uh, for sure, 100%. We know they are. We know they are. It's a matter of time. 100%. All right, let's go to Donnie B. Donnie B., what's up, brother? 
says, loving the show, fellas. Let's talk about the Purdue and UConn matchup tonight. I think a lot of it's going to have to do with how the referees call the game. It, it is, but I think, it's, I think this game, if there's ever a game that's going to be easier to officiate with a 7'4 monster that like Zach Eady, it's when there's a 7'2 monster in Klingon that's right there, right? It evens it out a little bit. It makes it easier to say, look, you know, if I'm going to call it this way, I'm going to call it this way on both ends. If we're going to, I just hope they let them play. That's because because if you're a UConn, you really are hoping they let you be physical. Because I think UConn can out physical Purdue outside of you know the Nephilim circle that that Zach Eady, Eady stays in. But here's the real question: Are they going to call three seconds tonight? I know they never call it. You never hear it. But both Eady and Klingon, they park in that lane. They park in it. The good thing about Edie is he takes one step and he's past the three-point line. So I, 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 it should be a heck of a game. If they let him play more, I think it just benefits UConn a lot more than it does Purdue. Let's go to Mr. Rogers. What's up? He says, my worst over the weekend is Caitlin Clark career not finishing with a national mm. championship. Doesn't mean she isn't great, though. Uh, you know, Iowa didn't have any depth. No. If you look, that, that was the biggest difference in that game. And I do want to give... You know, we'll say when Don Saley's wrong, I think she's wrong. I thought her giving Caitlin Clark a shout out, getting the person to bring the mic back and say that she was one of the greatest to play women's college basketball. And for some reason, like all these women complain about their sports not being elevated. And yet when somebody does it, like they just crap all over. Like, did anybody else notice that? And then all of a sudden, after the loss, they started backtracking. Well, here's Sue Bird. Thanks for the memories. Like, it just, it shocks me that. You, you want your sport to be out there. All of a sudden, it does. Caitlin Clark's helping break records for views, and she's not the only one, but she's the main catalyst, and you just knock her down. Like, I, I didn't understand that, but I thought Don Staley showed a lot of class. Um, That's what happens when you're on top, up. man. People yeah. try to knock Nick Saban down, Tom Brady down, so she should take it as a badge of honor. She had 18 points in the first quarter yeah. of the national championship. 18 points. Kind of disappeared a little bit at the end, but South Carolina was just so much better at every single She struggled game. dribbling the ball. Um, and then the Sue Bird thing. Like, a lot of those, they, they went to UConn, right? Which yeah, actually, it's, it was, you know, Brianna Stewart. And look, I, I get it, but I, I don't think it should just be like when Jay Williams said, oh, well, you can't consider her great because she didn't win a ring. I mean, imagine taking oh, that. She's going to play for a long time. Yeah. A bunch of champions. Imagine taking that and, and putting it everywhere else around sports. Like, man, I guess Dan Marino was I think great. the, uh, yeah, exactly. I think the Iowa-UConn Final Four matchup peaked at 17 million viewers, something like that. That's wild. It is wild. That's more than any NBA game or World Series in the past four years, I believe. Yeah. Actually, do we have the clip? The, we have to react to the foul call at the end of the Iowa-UConn game. Yeah, Everyone I do. Was it, talking about this. They called yeah. an offensive foul. Run this. Here's the pick here. Right here. Foul. Everyone's talking about you can't call that with five seconds left in the game. Well, then, then, why, then why is it in the rule book? Exactly. If you can't call it with five, you can't officiate no. like that. No. Like, it's either a foul and it's been a foul, yeah. or it's not a foul and it hasn't been a foul. That's a moving screen. It doesn't matter how much time's left on yeah, the clock. Yeah, you, you well, can't. Go ask the, the Saints versus the Rams. So none, none of you think that that's a bad call? No, no and there's a moving. better, I didn't and there's a lot better angle from a, from a video that has the backside behind the guy, uh, person who's throwing the ball in. It's a move. First of all, it's a high pick, and two, it's a moving. So pick. you're out in the open. Well, if it you know, was, that's funny that you say it because the, when I when they called this, I was thinking there was three or four possessions in a row earlier, like. Um, I guess a, a minute and a half before this happened, where I was like, man, they're letting UConn just move on all these screens to try and get Beckers mm -hmm. open, and they didn't call it, but it was all down low. Mm -hmm. So when you're setting a pickup, you're high, ISO'd you up top, you're visible. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and it, I, I think that's a, a blatant foul. Like, I don't think that's close. I, I could maybe un understand the argument of, hey, the whole game we've officiated this way, we, we've been letting them play a little bit. If it's, if it's kind of in between, we're just going to consider it not a foul, and that's the way we've been calling it. That wasn't that. Like, that was a blatant moving screen mm -hmm. in my I opinion. agree. I agree. Let's go to Griswold711. said, hey, fellas, enjoyed last Thursday's trip down in Gainesville. Great job. Yes. Full disclosure, I'm an FSU alum and was balls deep behind enemy lines. Hey, look, <laughs> hey, it, was, it was great to see you. Uh, and also, want to give a shout-out to the YAF chapter down at the UC, yeah. University of Florida. We're going to have highlights of it. It was a great conversation. Got to screen Lady Ballers. Um, just a, a lot of fun. Uh, and and shout-out to Bree and everybody involved down there for making it a great process. 
All right, let's go to Starvin Marvin. What's up, brother? He says, right now, which Coach Cal League in Arkansas, Kentucky, can Kentucky even make a bad hire since Cal dropped the bar so low? Well, it's, uh, yeah, they can make a bad hire. A anybody can make a bad hire. Just because you're at one of the ivory tower places and maybe it hasn't gone as well as what you've, you know, you're used to or what the standard is, you know, that doesn't mean you just go out there and reach and guess. And I mean, you do your due diligence. You know, Kentucky hadn't had to hire a guy in 15 years, so the landscape's changed a lot. But yeah, you want to go make the best hire possible. This is the lifeblood of Kentucky, the basketball team. It is. That's not a knock on Coach Stoops. We love Coach Stoops here, right? We always said Cal does less with more, and he does more with less than just about anybody. But, you know, it, it's you need to go get the guy. Because look at the SEC just in itself. Like, you look at college basketball. We can talk about the dominance of UConn and some of these other places, what Kelvin Sampson's doing at Houston. But the SEC's about to get Texas and Oklahoma, too. Like, it's, it, it, it ain't easy on these streets out here. Like, I know it wasn't pretty in, in the SEC for most of the NCAA tournament, especially easy. Uh, and now, obviously, you don't have a team that made the national championship. But it's, um, this isn't the old days of you're so much better than everybody else that you just go out there and run everybody. I mean, hell, Chris Beard's at Ole Miss. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, you know, if you're... I don't think Chris Jan's going to get the Kentucky job, but the but the fan base that should probably be the happiest outside of the ones that are involved about Calipari going to Arkansas is probably Mississippi State because I think Chris Jan's was a legitimate threat to go to Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And if that would have happened, my source told me that if Chris Jan's would have left Mississippi State to go to Arkansas, you know Mississippi State was going to hire? Bucky McMillan from Sanford, mm -hmm. which would have been Bucky a ball. hell of a hire. That dude coached his ass off, buddy, for sure. All right, let's get to uh, calls here in a minute, David, whenever you're ready. All right, go ahead. One more. Block. All right, let's go to Rico Suave. First of all, Rico, absolutely great name. Says a lot of crap has been talked on this show about Matt Painter in the tournament. I think it's time to give kudos and give him his flowers. I mean, I, I think we've been I I think we've been very cordial about Matt Painter. I mean, it's uh, talked about. It, I thought he was a great coach, but it's just like you know some of these other guys we looked at here, like Rick Barnes, who finally kind kind of got that monkey off his back a little bit. He needed to make this run. In the tournament, not that he's that produced, you know, loss in the first round every year, but you go back and look what's happened in previous seasons. You know, we saw something similar with Virginia after they lost early in the tournament to a 16 seed in UMBC. Embarrassment is a hell of a fuel. But no, look, Matt Painter, th that's quash now. Like it's it's done now. I mean, Matt Painter is he's led his team to the national championship. All that you can't win in the tournament or go deep in the tournament. That's that's dead. He had to make it go kaput. And he made it go kaput. So, yeah, I mean, I'll give him his flowers all day, man. I'll turn this into a nursery, dog. And in a tough region, too. I mean, yeah. in a very tough really region. Really tough region. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. All right, let's go to Tony P. Tony, what's up, brother? He says, what's one guy in tonight's game that we haven't talked about that's going to make a difference? That we haven't mm -hmm. talked about? I mean, if, if, if I'm looking at Purdue, to me, it's Gillis. Because he's their 45% three-point shooter. He's got to be able to hit those corner threes. He's got to find a way to get open to be able to hit those shots. Uh, if you're looking at UConn, probably the backup big, probably Sampson. That's probably the guy because everybody's going to be talking about Klingon. Sampson's probably going to be in there when Edie's not. You know, the few times where Edie sits, which he's going to play most of the game tonight. If he's able to go in and give them some really good minutes and let that be an advantage for them down low when Edie's on the bench and he's on the floor, then, then I think you could see him have a big effect. Maybe even if just rebounds, right? I don't even talking about points. But drawing fouls, doing things like that, the little things, the garbage stuff. All right, let's go to Holden. I'm not saying your last name, but great username. Dude. Great username. This is no logic in arguing you need a championship to be one of the greatest. Being the greatest is an individual achievement. Championships are team accomplishments. It's very simple. Yeah, uh, it's, I, I agree with that. It's, it just, you know, it helps. Right? If we're talking about the greatest of all, we have to understand the difference between the, the conversation of the greatest and then the conversation of the greatest of all time. Is he talking about Caitlin Clark still? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, to be the greatest of all time, I think you do have to win a championship. Mm -hmm. But not to be great, right? Just to be great. Like I think Carl Malone, incredible basketball player. He never won it, right? When we talk about MJ and LeBron, what does it always go back to? Right, if we're talking about the greatest of all time, yeah, we look at the individual awards, but you look at the championships won. Right, that's that's one of the biggest kind of deciding factors. Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, right? What what was that? Well, who's going to win the World Cup? And it, it, I think if we're, you're parsing and splitting hairs like that, if we were going to say is Caitlin Clark 
the greatest women's basketball player of all time? No. Is she great? Yes. We don't need to conflate the two. Well, part of the what I the issue that I took with what Jay Williams said about her is he's only taken into account her college career. She's yeah. about to play for a long time. I mean, what if she wins 10 WNBA championships or something? I don't know what her high school record is, but what if she won a stick? Well, sure, it's good. Well, well on, that, on that same note. What it, like, th- this is the only level you're taking into yeah. account on whether or not she won championships. And the, the toughest part about college is you only get max four years. I mean, I know some people get more with the COVID eligibility and all that kind of stuff, but you only get to play four years in college. And kudos to her for not transferring out like all these other players did to go form a super team at LSU or at South Carolina. I mean, she could have gone to either one of those programs and they would have beaten all of the teams even worse than they just beat the teams. Yeah, no, they, they could have, her, she could have teamed up with Haley Van Lith and, and Angel Reese yeah. and they could have just basically been a, a WNBA team out there playing, but she didn't and, and good for her. All right, let's get to calls. We got Matthew on the line in Arkansas. Get Should those calls in. Coming. Matthew, what's Y'all's up? Ass up. What's up, Matthew? What's up, y'all? It is the heartbroken hog here, and man, has it been a whirlwind of a weekend on hog Twitter. I, I bet it has. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, after I mean, I replied to your post, Jake, asking about on Friday who is going to be the guy at Arkansas, and I said defiantly, it's going to be Chris Beard. <laughs> so everyone was saying Chris Beard. One of my favorite guys, Curtis Wilkerson, he had a guy inside Arkansas tell him they were going after Chris Beard hard. He was absolutely offered the job, y'all. And what I heard is that they gave him $5 million in NIL, Ole Miss did, to get him to stay. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know how true the rest of the weekend was. I mean, there was you know, the Jerome Tang rumors. People were talking about Will Wade possibly coming up to Fayetteville. Chris Jans was talked about coming to Fayetteville on Sunday. Then the news comes out about Kala Perry. I don't know if the Tysons saw what was going on and said, oh, hell no, we got to stop this or what. But well, I'm absolutely taking Kala Perry over any of those options. Well, uh, again, and there's a lot of Arkansas fans that went back and deleted a lot of tweets about Kentucky and Calipari. I can promise you that. That's just how it goes. It'll always be that way with fans. It's a good hire. I think Calipari is a good coach. I think going in a place like Arkansas is better for him. I think a fresh start is better for him, and a fresh start may give him a fresh theory, and he may start kind of going about it a little bit of a different way like Kentucky fans wanted him to that he never did. Here's the way... I think this Tyson, Booster, Arkansas, Calipari thing went down. I think Arkansas said, hey, like you always do, you know, how much much can we spend to go get a guy to replace us, this, that, and the other, and you start going to your biggest donors and, you know, you're finding out connections. And what I think happened was Tyson said, let me reach out to Calipari, his his group did, and they probably got a a better response than maybe even they thought that they were going to get. That gets passed on, then all of a sudden, the hey, we're going after Chris Beard, we're going after Jerome Tang, that gets put on the back burner. Let's see if we can go full speed and get Coach Cal because we have this relationship, and it ends up working out. And that's that's we see this in all type of businesses, right? It's not just what you know, it's who you know. Uh, it's it's who you know that gets you there and what you know that keeps you there. So that's probably how it went. But this is, I'm trying to think of a more shocking hire just in any sport i'm just i i don't know i this I, yeah, I this I, this surprised me more than anything i didn't think that arkansas could set twitter on fire more than a few months ago when they hired bobby petrino I mean, back yeah. and then this happens i mean it just it, I, I i was again i got a call yesterday at about 4:30 from a well, I got a text that said, Holy, you know what? Call me. Got called him back. He said, You're not gonna believe this. I just got off the phone with a with a, a coach, and he said that Calipari's going to Arkansas. And then that same guy tweeted out hearing that. And people, I forgot who it was, one guy was like, This is the most far fit. This will never happen. Literally 45 minutes later, all of a sudden it starts making its rounds. Calipari to Arkansas, Calipari to Arkansas. It just goes to show you, man. It's uh, it's wild out here. And it kind of brings you back. I don't know if you remember this video, Heartbroken, Heartbroken Hog, which I'm sure you do. 
But you remember when Cal was in that diner and somewhere in Arkansas, and they're in there calling the hogs? Oh, and yeah. Down and he's in there smiling and laughing. Yeah. It's like he's super comfortable yeah, in this saw, awkward I saw situation. Some tweeting about how much Cal actually loves coming yeah. to Bud Walton and loves the area. So, I mean, look, I mean, uh, but are you worried? Are you? Because the one thing Eric Musselman did, he did get it done in March to a certain extent. And one guy who hasn't got it done recently with elite talent is Coach Cal. Are you a little bit trepidatious about that? I am definitely worried about it. I am very concerned about what our first trip to the tournament will be like, though I am glad that I know that we're going to be in the tournament, that we're going to have a winning record in the SEC, and we're going to have something Arkansas hadn't had in a long time, and that's an actual skilled seven-foot big man that Coach mm. Cal always goes over a seven-footer mm. island to go get. Yeah, <laughs> you think they're going to bring that big Yugoslavian or whoever? Well, they, yeah. they got that I'm lefty. interested. Is there, is there, as an Arkansas fan, all right, is there a grace period, right? Is it two man, years? Man, hell no. Is it two no, years? You bring Cal. It, no. I saw someone talking about this the other day. No. Or does Arkansas expect him to come in right away and win? I, I mean, the first year, I mean, I'm expecting we're going to win 20-plus games, that we're going to have a really good roster that everyone's going to be super excited about. And if we flame out in the first round, Pogs fans <laughs> are going to be at his door wondering why we gave this man $8 million a year. Why would you expect anything different? Yeah, no, I'm paying you that money. I, I need to be here a couple weekends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Great Matthew. Call, man. Thanks, buddy. Y'all right. have a good one. You yeah, too, man. bro. All right, let's go to Josh in North Carolina. Josh, what's up? Hey, guys, what's up? What's, what's up, up man? dude? Uh, you know, um, I went to the Braves game and um, got to meet up with Trey. And um, what was funny was, when I bought these tickets a few months ago, he was telling me good spots to set a stadium, and he told me how he was a partial season ticket holder. And I learned where he was sitting, and I was like, oh, funny enough, I can get these tickets uh, right behind you. So we ended up sitting, like, pretty close That's to dope. one another. And it's Booster Club, man. Met up before the game. Yeah, met up before the game. Uh, you know, got a drink and then went to the game. Um it was awesome, and it was, you know, uh, we were down 5-2 to two in the bottom of the eighth, and I turned my, my ball cap inside out. So it was a rally, rally cap, like, baby. Doing? And I'm, I, I was like, this is a rally cap. This, this is how it goes. And then we started, you know, chopping, and then we just came back and won, and it was, it was incredible. And, you know, like, the best experience was doing the chop because I don't care if you're depressed or whatever – it's just cathartic just doing oh, yeah. the yeah, it is. And everybody else and just change. It really is. It, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the only thing that's it's getting Florida stands through what happened to them last year. They're just chopping, just crying yeah, in their rooms. Right. <laughs> right. But, yeah, I had a great time. And, um, you know, th thanks to y'all, I was able to, you know, meet, meet some amazing people and, you know, a lot of fun. And, you know, hope I'm able to meet some more boosters soon. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great park. Uh, did you go to the battery? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we went to the battery. Um, wasn't able to, like, you know, bar hop like I wanted to, but um, didn't end up going to the Fat Tuesdays, and the server I had there uh, was a woman, and I accidentally called her sir, and then I said, I'm sorry, ma'am, and then she's like, well, I could be a sir, too, and I, I laughed, and I said, no, no, you can't. No, you, yeah, no, you could be yeah, a server. Yeah. Yeah, no, you cannot. <laughs> yeah. See, I wish you, see, right. you should have had me there. I'd have said uh, that. But that's what that's what makes the booster exactly. club great, man. That's what mo mm -hmm. makes the booster club great. This, the 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 friendships and the family atmosphere that we're trying to bring everybody yeah. together around sports, man. That's yeah. awesome, Josh. And Josh, you should get this new second yeah. gen Jeremy's Precision Five Razor too. Yeah. Because I know you got. Uh, I know you got delicious. Sucks, uh, I... Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say it sucks because I just got uh, my first Jeremy's Razor like a month or two months ago, and we already Look. got an upgrade, and I never got a newsletter about that's, it, but, you know. That's, Here's your now, newsletter, yeah. Josh. Here it is right here. It's right here, buddy. <laughs> this is what we do for you. But no, nah, man, glad you, glad you enjoyed it. Glad the Braves were able to win. Was it pretty packed? Oh, yeah. It was 
Uh, like, honestly, I was surprised at how packed it was just because yeah. it was, like, so early on. But, like, this, all the seats were pretty filled except for, like, maybe a few. Yeah, so, yeah it was yeah. pretty packed. No, I love Truist, man. Well, man, hey, let, let us know next time you go. Yes, sir. we Will do. All right, Josh. Josh. Adios, you, brother. Man. Adios, brother. All right, next up, Kirk in Canada. Kirk, Kirk all the regulars today. Hey, gentlemen, gentlemen, how's it going today? What's, What's up, up, man? Before we get to some uh, hockey, we're gonna we're gonna highlight the fact that uh, I don't think it's been mentioned. Maybe it has that Zach Eady, uh, two-time ch- uh, National Player of the Year in the college from Toronto, mm. Ontario, Canada. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. How did that thing get to so, big, big connect? Yeah, I don't know. I heard he had problems with his NIL too. Like there's some some you can't get it America done in America. You can't capitalize on NIL while you're, you have to like be in Canada or you have to be what? outside of America. That's just, about the most Canadian about. thing I've ever heard. Well, I think it's an it's American. American. Yeah, it, really? It, yeah. If the well, fewer, if that if way. fewer running our government had anything to do with it, well, that, that doesn't surprise me at all. Actually. Yeah. Mm. Well, That's it's I, I, I'm trying to think. I mean, other basketball players from Canada. Steve Nash is from Canada, correct? Yeah. Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins. Number one overall player. Number yeah. one overall pick. Uh, Canada sneaks think out. Think it's not just on the ice. What's the fly? What What is the Flyers Leafs update? I know you said you're going to get to oh, hockey, that but was now the other I'm thing in- I wanted to talk about. Anybody want to guess which team's on a seven game losing streak? <laughs> yeah, the 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 Grounders. <laughs> Laugh the it up, Flyers. Kirk. Seven. Laugh God. it up, Blaine, Blaine, Blaine let a long. Real funny, Kirk. Blaine let a long time this year to only just. Hey, we're not out of it yet. In. We're not out of it yet. Dreams can still happen. Plus 14, baby. <laughs> yeah, you better get hot quick. I'm not excited you know, about You guys it. only got four more games to play. Four more. We got five. You guys got four. We're plus 14. That's what I'm talking about. So oh. it was 12 and a half. So you you're a needle. Up. Flyers basically just got to win out. <laughs> so basketball players so from Canada, Michigan. Andrew Wiggins, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Yep. Jamal Murray, yep. yep. Dylan Brooks, haha. Ha. RJ Barrett. Dylan Brooks is from Canada. Canada. Hmm. Oh, there's a guy, Shaq, somebody, Sha, uh, Sha, uh, or Shai, Shai, S H A I, somebody. Shai Gildas Alexander. Yeah, yeah, yeah Shai Gildas Alexander. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yep, he's yeah. really good, dude. Dog. Before I let you guys go, there was a uh, one of Wayne Gretzky's 61 uh, NHL records was tied last week by Mister Sidney Crosby. The kid, which is uh, obviously no small feat. Uh, Sidney Crosby became. Uh, tied for first with 19 seasons or more, averaging a point a game. Mm, and dude, Wayne Gretzky's the only guy to do that. Like that. <laughs> I saw a Wayne Gretzky stat the other day. Is Wayne Gretzky's the only player in NH history to record 200 points in a single season, and he did it four That's times true. in a row. Yep. Did it four, four times, times in a row. row. Did it four times in a row. Wow, the chosen yep. one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. That's Mario season. got 199, but he couldn't get that 200. But uh, no, that's right. He, he, if Wayne Gretzky didn't score a single goal in the NHL, he would still be the NHL points leader. Just for okay. Uh, okay. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Say that one more time. If Wayne Gretzky didn't score one goal in the NHL, he'd still be the all-time points leader. That's how many he assists he had. Assists. Wow. He has more assists than anybody else has points. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, That's insane. Like, it like, must be nice for most, Hollywood. One of the most dominant. unquestionable greatest. Yeah, one of the most dominant like, no sports even, players, yeah. you know, ever. Yeah. Ever. Oh, 100%. Wow. Damn. 100%. Wait, well, that's, Sidney Crosby just t- – I think Sidney Crosby's going to break that record next year. He's going to average a point a game next year and be the only player to have 20 or more seasons averaging a point a game, which is phenomenal. Yeah. Man, Kirk, anyway, you always bring the I'm, heat, buddy. But I'm, try- I'm cheering for those Boilermakers tonight because I want to see Zach Eady win a championship on north of the border. But <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a <laughs> Best dummy. of I luck. Know that we're probably going to lose by 14. Best of luck. We'll by the way, that. I saw a decent amount of Purdue fans out at, uh, in Nashville. Yeah. yeah, they're out there. Saturday. Yeah, they're out there. Great but, call, uh, Kirk. It, Kirk. Whatever, dude. Thanks, Kirk. Plus 14. <laughs> Get out of here, Kirk. <laughs> said, <"Woo-hoo." laughs> All right, next up, King Don in Little Rock, Arkansas. King Don, Uh-oh. what's up? Hi guys. Um, so uh, I have a question about the Bears draft picks. 
Mm. So they obviously have the first and the ninth, but after that, they only have two more, the 75th and the 122nd. I know everyone's saying, oh, they should take like Monique Namers or Madunze, or maybe if somehow Marvin Harrison falls that far to nine, they should take him. Do you guys think that maybe it would be smarter for them to instead trade down because it's such a loaded wide receiver class and they have two other picks and they have a lot and they could really use the extra draft capital? Yeah. Well, are you talking about trade down that first pick? Not the first, uh, no, probably not the, the ninth. Uh, yeah, the ninth. probably the ninth. I was yeah. just making sure you didn't mean that because they, they want Caleb Williams, obviously. I mean, I'm sure. I, I, yeah. If they uh, you down know, the I, 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 think, I think this is, is one of those situations where obviously depending on what you get it would show you the value of, of trading that ninth down. Marvin Harrison isn't falling to nine, so you might as well forget that one. Um, if, if you could possibly add, trade down that ninth pick, and give yourself two to three the more Vikings picks. Would give you a lot. They, uh, probably the question now Man. becomes, and I, I mean, I'll say you this, King Don. Yeah, well, I and well, I'm not. I understand they're in your division, and and some people don't like to trade with people in their division. I, I get that, but I don't think that should limit you from being able to make the de- best decision possible for your franchise. My my thing is again, we we've talked about how deep this wide receiver class is. When Troy Franklin is the tenth rated prospect. Uh, in, at wide receiver yeah. at a position group, you know how deep they are. I'm just, I'm to the point now where, you know, if if with what you've you've brought in, you've moved Justin Fields, you're gonna bring Caleb Williams in. Do you spend that that capital that you would trade down on linemen? Do you think there'll be enough good offensive linemen down at the bottom to be able to trade that pick, and it'll be worth that ninth? I mean, that's what you got to weigh against. You know, yourself, and then you look at defense. I mean, the Bears aren't exactly, you know, their defense played better than what I thought after they lost, or after they moved Roquan Smith last year. But, man, I don't know because is Malik Neighbors going to be at nine? No. There's no way, right? No, so, not be at nine. I mean, what's the biggest Dude, difference between Roma Troy Dunze. Franklin and <laughs> Roma Dunze? Yeah. Like, I don't think Roma Dunze difference. would be there either. I think Roma Dunze is going to go seventh. Right now, if you're the Bears, I'm looking at it like this. All right. Obviously, you're going to look what you, can you get but when it comes to the Broncos. The Vikings, anyone from that 9 to 12 range, there's going to be a lot of uh, teams gunning to go get a quarterback so you can probably get a lot of capital. But, man, maybe it's just the SEC fan in me. And I know you already got one. We know what's better than one. It's two. It's hard for me to sit at 9 with Brock Bowers from Georgia sitting there from tight yeah, end. He may not be there. And for me not to pick him. All right, if Brock <laughs> Bowers is there at 9, I know you have Cole Komet, and he's a great player. All right, but Brock can play receiver, tight end, can serve you hot dogs. You can do whatever he wants. Just after what I think Brock Bowers is going to be a phenomenal player in the NFL. And what's hot right now, it's tight ends, man. It's tight ends. The best of both worlds. That's what they can do. So if I'm a Bears fan, if Brock Bowers is there, I'm taking. Yeah, it's. I, I don't think that's crazy at all. King Don, you said you would love for the Bears to trade away from that first pick. Uh, I thought you wanted them to get oh, Caleb yeah. Williams. I thought you didn't believe in Caleb uh, Williams. Or in Justin Fields. No, I didn't believe in Justin Fields. I wanted them to keep Justin Fields. Yeah, but uh, after that, so you think Caleb Williams is going to be a great NFL quarterback? I think he, him and Jaden Daniels, I think, are uh, the highest ceiling out of any, like not even close out of anyone in this draft. So I think he has, because, um, you know, just from a beard, pure talent standpoint, so I am worried that he will be good. I don't know if he'll be great. I mean, the last generational shoe-in great quarterback that went first overall was Trevor Lawrence, and he's been nothing but mid, even with good coaches and good weapons and a decent defense. So, I mean, yeah, then you look at what a guy like Brock Purdy's doing. You know, I mean, there's it just shows you there's so – it's all over the spectrum. I mean, there's more than one way to skin a cat. It's just the, the, the fear I would have if I was Chicago is that on one hand, you could get a lot of value out of moving down in that first pick and still get a really good quarterback in, in this class, or at least what you think would be a really good quarterback. But if you trade that down and you don't get Caleb Williams and he turns into what some people think he can turn into and you miss out on that, I mean, that that gets you fired. Mm-hmm. But like, you're, you're fired. So yeah, this is I, one of those decisions. You kind of have to take him. You kind of, you're almost pushed to do it, right? Yeah. Well, if you're not going to take him, I you better it. take one of the top three. 
Like either, well, you it better, it better be, be right. Drake Mayer or, or, or Jane Daniels. And if you were going to do that, why not keep Justin Fields? You didn't get enough for yeah, him true. to justify. I mean, at that point, you could yeah. create a quarterback competition. Well, you talk about getting more picks. You move off that one pick, you keep the ninth, and now, you know, all of a sudden you're, you've are you got three more picks than what you thought, or maybe you, you made a move. They couldn't go past roster. three, though, right? No. The Vikings, I mean, the Vikings would give a lot for that ninth pick. They already have two first round picks, one from the Texans, and um, they're at pick 23, which that means that. Uh, who knows? Michael Penix might not even Michael Penix or Bo Nix might not even be on there because the Raiders need a quarterback, the Broncos need a quarterback, um, the, the the Seahawks might draft a quarterback. Look, you can't look like a genius now. There's a, there's a lane to look like a genius with the depth of quarterbacks in this draft. If you do trade that first pick and you don't go top three, which I think kind of crazy to do, and you wait and you wait for maybe a JJ McCarthy. Right, maybe. See, I th- well, so uh, you're just gonna that's, throw JJ McCarthy. Like, like if you're gonna have a late pick, Zach Wilson. Right. Well, I think JJ is gonna be better than Zach Wilson. Well, I, I think still, I mean, I'm yeah, hearing the Vikings want to move. I'm hearing the Vikings want to move to five. Not. I'm hearing they want to move to five and trade with the Chargers to get JJ McCarthy. So, and again, every year we <laughs> see really one of these the quarterbacks. Chargers, they could use it. Every year we see one of these guys' names comes up and yeah, they're well, waiting the whole first day. Well, the Chargers aren't getting a draft on a quarterback. You know, like you could, like you said, so that fifth pick, you know, no. here, let me see all I can get for it. I just can't I just still keep thinking JJ McCarthy is the kid from the Goonies, and you can't prove to me that he's not. They look exactly alike. Like it is scary. I do want to say though, um the last time we had this a really high re- supposedly really deep draft class with one presumption number one overall since he was basically in diapers and uh one white kid with the big arm who did really good at a combine that rose way up the draft boards and there's a bunch of other really talented people all around uh it, the, that draft class wasn't so great for quarterbacks yeah. well this is what makes it fun now like, we're not type draft classes ever yeah yeah i mean true. you know look at it, it happens all the time and then there's guys that come out of nowhere and they end up it ends up being a sneaky draft class but king don it's always great when you call in buddy thanks have a good day y'all you too man. Right, man go you learn too. something all right i'm gonna get to these bets and we're gonna get back to the booster club remember we are live streaming tonight and hit that subscribe button we're trying to get to a trillion subscribers by the end of the year with your help we think we can do it especially since we're put to shooting rockets at the moon during eclipses how crazy so, is that Four and two yesterday should have been five and one, but Florida baseball can't hold on to a two-run lead on the road at Missouri. Ha 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 ha! Tonight, yeah, Cincinnati. Like I said, we're live streaming it. Check us out. Eight o'clock game comes on at eight twenty. Purdue UConn. I'm taking the over at one forty-five. That's at minus one hundred eight. Then give me UConn minus six and a half because why not? That's going off at minus one ten. David. I love UConn's team total points over 75 and love a half. you, dog. That's minus 125. And then I'm going to go with a little Major League Baseball action here. Braves, minus one and a half. That's minus 118. Hosting the Mets at home in Truist. All right. We got to pick it up a little bit. Rays, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> minus one and a half. You're up three in the ninth and you give up two runs. Kill me. Kill me. All right. Tonight I'm going UConn minus six and a half. I'm rolling with Dan Hurley. And the boys might ladder that to see how the game goes. And I'm going the under in the first half, 68 and a half Purdue. UConn, I think it's going to be a little, you know, maybe first seven minutes. Feel it feel out. Each feel other it out, out a little bit. Yeah. See how the refs are calling the game. I do like the under in the first half. And I don't think you're uh, – I think it's a good bet to go over total for the game. Yep. All right, Ace, look, we're, we're riding or dying with this UConn minus six and a half, buddy. Uh, he's going to take them at minus six and a half and minus 110. Then the D-backs coming off a sweep to the Braves. Oh, sorry. Uh, even though I do like the Diamondbacks. Uh, he's going to take them minus one and a half. That's on the run line at a smooth and clean 118. All right, Chad, let's go to Grizzly. What's up, Grizzly? He says, we all know how grossly underpaid Acuna is now. He will still be only 29 when his contract ends in 2028. Should the Braves restructure with him? And if so, when can have another Freddie Freeman situation? <laughs> Whatever Alex Anthopoulos wants to do, I am 100% behind, and you will not hear an argument from me. So whatever he chooses to do is probably the best decision. I would guess the Braves would re-sign him. Acuna, he's the face of the the franchise. I mean, he really is. Freddie was, too, though. Um, No, Freddie was, too. Freddie was, too. But I think, I, I, I wonder how Ronnie's 
the people surrounding him are going to, if they're going to react the way that kind of Freddie's family and everybody else react. I would think Akuna would want to stay with Ozzy and the rest of these guys. Um, Because, I mean, you've got a core of young players. I mean, and the Braves got him early. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a path going forward where they can keep everybody in and keep adding. So uh, I hope they figure it out. All right, let's get to donations here. We're going to start off with a couple from QSMO Jimbo. Appreciate a $5 donation. Shout out producer Justine for that opt-in Daily Wire. Well-written piece. Great run by NC State in 2024 and hope to see you write more in the future. It is it as if this exact matchup was meant to happen all along. An unstoppable force to UConn basketball versus an immovable immo- object of Zach Eady and Purdue. Well, I just feel like UConn, mm-hmm. not saying Purdue is not a great team. They're obviously a great team there in the national championship. But I think Purdue is a lot more of a one-trick pony than UConn is. But it is one game, and it's a hell of a trick. The thing is seven foot four, full of a trick. I was going to do a $2 donation from Evan McCarful. Evan, appreciate it. He says, AR guaranteed most NIL for Cal at $5 million dollars well you want to swing a big stick um i mean to be able to and i don't think arkansas puts as as much money toward basketball as kentucky but to be able to and here's the question david do you think kentucky was like oh cal like man just go ahead i guess you know, it's yeah. We're not we're not going to offer that much. Hopefully, he leaves. Yeah. So have to pay th- like not, how much of I? Not mad about that. Uh, I I don't think there was a ton of you know no like don't go like hanging you know as, as the raft swims away from you like I I feel like this is kind of a, just a good mutual. This they got good, out of a lifetime contract. Got out of a like, snuck out of a lifetime contract. I was going to a $5 donation from RJ. RJ, appreciate it. He says, if there's ever a game for the aliens to come watch, yes. it has to be Purdue versus UConn. Mm-hmm. Well, they've got two of them that are playing. Yeah. I mean, I think Kling- Klingon's from whatever Star Trek planet they're from. And he's then from e- Klingon. Yeah, he's from Klingon. And then Edie is from, like, Zeta Reticula 4. Like, his spaceship his spaceship landed here and They've been here. They've ago. been here for a while. It was under the ice in Antarctica. It's still there. And yeah, it's still there. And he just walked out, walked to Canada. And they're like, hey, go to IMG. They're like, hey, we found the seven foot four guy. All right, let's go to a $5 donation from Justin. Justin, appreciate it. it. says, who do y'all have in the natty? I need winners. Purdue or UConn, I say UConn. Yeah, I'm, I'm going UConn. I mean, Tony? Should I just be different? No. Purdue. Are you trying to make fetch work? Purdue. I love like fetch work. All right, let's go to our resident Phillies fan, Ryan Gade. Five dollar donation. Found Humping Badger's latest victim, <gasps> Spencer Strider. Sad what? to hear he's hurt, but glad he's not pitching for the Braves. Hashtag Braves suck. Hashtag 150 games. Right. To Ryan, go. listen, listen. Yeah. You know what? I'll say a lot of things about the Phillies, but I'm not going to come on here and applaud injuries. You know, now look. You'd be ashamed of yourself. It'd be a shame if something happened to Bryce Harper. Let's go to a $5 donation from the boy Chase Mills. Been doing it my whole life. He said, it had been 12 years. Yup. Since the Oklahoma softball program lost a series. Let that sink in first. 12 years? 12 years? Patty Gasso. Bull. No way. No way that's Bye. right. No way that's right. Lost a series? 12 seasons? And you have 12 years? That's the greatest coaching job I've ever seen in my life. Wow. That's... There's no way that's been even close to replicated in baseball or softball. There's no way. That's insane. 12 years. That's last like one. Joey Chestnut type. Last guy. one of the day. $2 donation from Steve, training card frenzy. The- uh, $145 to go for the goal, fellas. Let's keep it up. We're doing great. We're doing great, Steve. Right, We're going to get there, bud. I'm going to help out. All right. I'm going to help out a little bit today after I win a bunch of money. Tonight, after I got killed. live stream, kill live stream, but not the overnight hop the on in. I missed that one too. You're slated 169. This is gonna you, be fun tonight, and, and you end up with 158. I'm excited about this game. I really am legitimately excited about this basketball game. I mean, if there's ever ever to be a game excited about. It's got to be this one, right? Yeah. All right, I'm rolling back here. Let's get to the poll. My thing froze, but don't worry. I'm I make moves under pressure. Pressure is a privilege. Makes We're gonna get to the man. poll. Right now, did Arkansas make the right hire? C or nay? Yeah. C. Great hire. C. Um, give me yes. Give me yes at. I'll say sixty-three percent. 
I'm going to go 64%. You know what? I think I'm going to go even higher. I'm going to say yes, 72%. Yes. 66%, brother. Wow, I should have 66%, brother. No. I should have just gone with the easy 30. one. 34%. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Today. Yeah, prize. Uh, uh, oh God, I can't even talk. Anyways, make sure you join us for the live stream tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be kicking that bad boy off at 8 p.m. Let's watch the game together. Let's make money together. But most importantly, let's make memories together. And like Coach Calipari's tenure at Kentucky, we're going, going. Ooh, nice. Oh. Start the week. Gone.